So it's a beautiful Sunday and we are at Cascade Springs. So excited. It's been a long time since we were here. What a beautiful day to be outside walking. So here we are at Cascade Springs. Are we so glad to be out together with Chad and his family? Yeah, it's fun. It's a beautiful wow. day. There were a lot of leaves on the way in too. Beautiful. Brightly colored. Beautiful yeah, day. It was great. So this is the dog friendly area as long as they stay on the path. So Chad brought his dog, Mil Millie. It's our only female grand dog that we have. The rest of them are males. And here we are. The water is really low this year. In fact, the restrooms at the lower parking lot, they didn't have enough water for the restrooms. So I heard you have, to, if you want to use the restroom, you have to go to the upper parking lot. Well, there's water here. Oh, look how beautiful. Saratoga's oh, better. Yeah. So a lot of people out here this Sunday afternoon. So I'm at Cascade Springs here. It's beautiful. And I thought I would take a minute to share a little bit about my experiences with going back to preschool. I will say it's been an up and down. It's been a rocky road. It's been full of all kinds of little challenges that I hadn't thought of. And experience and also all kinds of joy. It's been really really fun having my own room again and seeing all of the good learning tools and the good learning things that are in the room and I love that and full of lots of cute kids, a few challenging kids, but a lot of fun. Um, it's a great environment, it's a lot of fun. The people are supportive of each other and I appreciate that. Um, I made a video a bit ago <laughs> when I was just starting and I said, I'm so excited I'm gonna be working for money. And I took it down because it didn't sound very good. But the truth is preschool teachers, they work for free. Because <laughs> there's no way you can get done everything in a 28 hours in a week. No, but I really enjoy working with the children again. I have missed having my own classroom and I love the experience of being able to see what I can do to create value for the children. You know, in one of the trainings that we had, um, we were asked if we remember any of our teachers that we grew up with, the good experiences and as I thought about it, I realized that in grade school, no, I didn't have any teachers that were good. Um, I, I had some teachers that were not so good, um, but I didn't have teachers that I felt uplifted me. I only remembered, I remembered a math teacher getting mad at me. I remember in fifth grade, I finally understood something in math. And I was so excited. I was like, I know the answer. And I had my hand, you know, and I was like blurting it out. And he had a yardstick and he slapped it down on the desk right in front of me. Boop, like really loud. You're supposed to raise your hand or you're not supposed to talk out of your turn. You know, I remember that. I remembered a third grade teacher telling everyone they had to stay in recess because someone what did something wrong in the boys' bathroom, and I felt that that wasn't very just. I also remembered one other thing I remembered in, what is it? Uh, I remembered a first grade teacher. Well, I remember two things. My first grade teacher, um, I was sitting on the row by a kid who was smart, and when I learned how to do subconscious work, the first experience that I ever had was that my subconscious mind, my teacher, Max Gausen, he said, let's just see what your mind brings back to you. And it brought back a core event where I made some decisions that affected my whole life. 
But I was in the front row and I was sitting next to a smart kid in my first grade class. And his name was Scott. And I looked over at his page. I just wanted to see what he was doing. And my teacher said, Christine, quit copying him. And I'm like, what? I wasn't copying him. And I made some real big decisions back then because, you know, I trusted authority figure. At figures, I believe they were telling the truth. And I thought, well, I must not be very smart, you know? And, um, and then so, so my mind couldn't find any, any pos any teachers that were positive, that I had positive experiences with. Another teacher in first grade, she got mad at the class because someone put all of the scissors in one hole in the scissor box. And so she went around and asked everyone to whisper in her ear if they were the one that did it. And she went around the whole classroom two times. And I remember thinking, should I say I did it? So the person who did it wouldn't get in trouble? Anyway, hi family, I'm coming. Here they are. And there's Millie. And there's two of my cute grandkids. Did you see any fish, Caden? He's the fish miser. He loves to catch fish. So beautiful. So I'm out here again some more. And anyway, I wanted, so I do have one really good experience of a teacher in Norway and one of a teacher well I'll first share the one in in one of my years in Norway in one of my Norwegian schools we had a teacher who used to kind of make fun of people with math in math like there was a girl at the back of the room and she wore really really high heel shoes and he, he made fun of her he had her come up to the front of the room with these great big high heel shoes and do a problem on the board and she didn't know how to do it and he just wanted to watch her walk up to the room with those high heel shoes and he called me Frook in America which is Miss America and he had me go up to the board and do math problems and I didn't know what I was doing so he he really wasn't a very kind teacher and besides that he was old and he really looked kind of he wasn't pleasant looking. He looked kind of like a troll. And then I want to share, I had one experience with a teacher that was quite incredible. So in, in one of my Norwegian schools, I had an English teacher. And um, when my parents, sometimes, well, my father was a mission president in Norway when I was a teenager from the ages of 14 to 17. And oftentimes they would go on um, uh, places with conferences with the missionaries. So sometimes my sister and I were left home alone in the mission home. And the mission home had the elders in it too. And so sometimes um, when I was young, I would become really sick at that time of the month. Really, really ill. And so one time... Um, I, uh, I needed to go home. I was so sick. And so um, one of the Norwegian teachers was talking. And so he was, so he was talking and I just got up in the middle of the room because I thought I was going to faint. So I went to the office and I said I needed to go home. And I explained what was going on. And they tried calling my home and my parents weren't home. And the missionaries who lived there weren't home either. So the school pay for a taxi to take me home. And later that day, the English teacher looked up my address of the mission home. And she looked up the address of the mission home and she came to visit me. And I, I was shocked. And the home was very messy. If you can imagine, if you can imagine a home um, with two teenagers, uh, probably, I was probably 15 at the time and my sister was three years younger. I was probably 15 or 16 at the time. My home, the home was very, very messy. But she came in and she wanted to check on me because she knew that I came home sick and she knew that 
my parents weren't around and she brought a great big bowl of fruit. And that was something for a Norwegian teacher to do that. Isn't that something? I was, that is my best experience of any of the teachers I've ever had, of showing compassion and caring. Otherwise the teachers, um, I can't, I just don't have good positive experiences with teachers. And there's Savannah. Okay, she's, okay, we got you in the video, Savannah. They've been throwing stuff at me when I've been trying to teach this. Well, I've been trying to tell this story. What? They've been throwing you little, little twigs at me. But story. anyway, so it's just interesting how, what you remember from grade school and junior high and the, pe the teachers that made a difference. But I did like Lake Ridge Elementary as a whole. And my mother was an awesome kindergarten teacher there. And I liked um, Lake Ridge as a whole, not necessarily the teachers in the school. I didn't really have good experiences with the teachers in the school. I think that as I've become older, I've realized, oh my gosh, I think by my trying to be a good preschool teacher that I'm trying to make up for, um, I'm trying to make up for and create some good experiences for kids that I didn't have, for children that I didn't have as a child. Anyway, just some musings as I'm out here at Cascade Springs. Hope you had good experiences in your grade school and if you didn't, hopefully you're creating good experiences with children around you or your grandchildren. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Oh